Hey guys, so today's project is this dress. I made it out of a queen size bed sheet that I found on clearance at Walmart. The cost for this dress was approximately $4, including tax. Uh, it's 100% cotton, it's really comfortable, and my daughters love it. I have done this pattern before, and it's pretty easy. I do find that it runs a little bit big around the waist, so that is the only modification I really had to do. This is the Hey June uh, website, and it is the Idlewise dress pattern. Just a disclaimer, some of my video content was lost, so I have more pictures and more of a description to give on some of these steps. So the first step is preparing all of the ruffles. It's a lot of ruffles. I take 2.75 inch long straps of fabric and I cut them all along the length of the queen size bed sheet. I believe I made four. I attach them together to make one long strand and I finish the ends. Now these ends are for the bottom of my skirt ruffle. They're surged at the end, folded over and stitched, straight stitched and that is how the finish of the skirt is. But for the bodice, I do a quarter inch fold over and another quarter inch and then a straight stitch because I want a nicer finish compared to the bottom of the skirt and then I just use a gathering foot to gather the top of it. So once the ruffles are made, I can do my circle skirt. I have two half circles which I attach at the seam to make one circle skirt. To that, I attach my ruffle which is basically putting right sides together of the skirt and the ruffle and serging the ends and then straight stitching it to secure it. I did not have video content to show but it's pretty self-explanatory to attach the ruffle I think. The next I gather the top of the skirt. In this case I don't use a gathering foot. I use the old method of doing two straight stitches all across the top at the highest um, stitch length and then like I'm showing you guys right now just pulling the thread to ruffle the top of my circle skirt. So the dress does require an opening in the back of the skirt because the back is going to have an opening for button closure and you do need an opening in the skirt in order to make it all work. Um, so because of that I just ended up doing a placket. I decided not to use the method that they used in their instructions. Maybe it was harder, maybe it was easier, but this is what I decided to do for my project. So I go ahead and I cut about three inches down and I stitch a rectangle just all the way across the top. And then I go ahead and I take about an inch from the top of that rectangle and I iron it down and I make sure that it's nice and straight as possible because that little corner piece likes to pucker if it's not done right. So I prep it with my iron so that it all stays in place and once that's done that one inch fold over is going to come down and be folded over again to cover that stitch line right there. And like I said it gets a little tricky you can go ahead and use clips to hold it in place and once you have done that you just stitch all the way across and try to get the fabric as neat as possible all the way across and it should work out perfectly but like I said the skirt does need some kind of opening because of the black back closure that this project has. So this method or another method would work perfectly. Moving on to the bodice, you have your main fabric and your lining fabric. They are identical of course, but there is a trick to assembling them. The back pieces need to be placed in opposite directions. So this is for example my main fabric and I am going to put the larger rectangle on the left and the smaller rectangle on the right and when I do my lining I can go ahead and do the opposite. So in this case the shorter rectangle will be on the left and the longer rectangle will be on the right and that is critical. You can do your side stitches and it should look like this. You can go ahead and open your seam allowance too. So they should be opposite of each other. See? One short, one long and when you place them on top of each other they line up perfectly which is why it's so important that you place them in the opposite directions. And then you can go ahead, do the side stitches all the way around, including the neckline, and close it all up. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and trim the seam allowance for a cleaner finish, especially around the curved neckline. And you can move on to creating the ruffles next. 
The next step is prepping the strap. You fold your strap piece in half and on one of the sides you fold it an additional time but the other end is left without any additional folds and on that wider side is where you will be attaching your ruffle. You place your ruffle right sides facing together so it should look like this and you can see how the strap pieces fold over rather than inwards or the fold goes outward rather than inwards and you go ahead and you clip it on and all you're going to do is do your straight stitch making sure that your ruffles are evenly distributed. I used a gathering foot so I'm pretty confident that my ruffles won't shift too much when I do this. And this is what it should look like. See how the right side's facing together and how the strap, other side of the strap folds over or opens up like that. And this is what it should look like. Now I did not have any video of me attaching the ruffle to my bodice, but the pattern does tell you where to place it. And all you do is just stitch it right on top of your bodice, two straight stitches all the way across. And that is how it's supposed to go. Unfortunately, I didn't have any video, but it just goes on top of the front and then you just match it up in the back to loop over. Once the bodice is finished and the skirt is finished, you can go ahead and assemble the dress. You're going to put your skirt wrong side facing out, right side facing in, and then you're going to take your bodice, fold it neatly, and you're going to have right side facing out. And when you tuck it into your skirt, you can go you will see that the right sides of the fabric are facing together. So right side of the skirt and right side of the bodice are facing each other. You can go ahead and clip all around the waistline and once you've done that you can go ahead and kind of work on the back area which is going to need a little bit more work than regular dresses because we have that opening where we are going to put the buttons. So like I've said before you don't need to do a placket like I did. There are other methods but you do need an opening because the fabric is going to have an opening for you to be able to place buttons and how that works is the longer side back piece of the bodice is not going to end at the end of the placket it's just going to come over about an inch and a half and the other side the shorter side is going to line up perfectly with the placket end or opening so here you can see what it's supposed to look like that is the long side sticking out and the other side ends perfectly with the placket lines up perfectly and that is like I said because the back is going to have button opening and therefore you need to have an opening in the back of your skirt for that reason. I just decided to do a placket because that's what I wanted to do. So the next part is finishing off that end right there. You can go ahead, turn, make sure that everything is done the right way, stitched around, serge if you want to and the back needs to be prepared for um, for sort of a needed, neater closure. So I go ahead and I mark with my marker right there, my gather skirt, you can tell it lines up perfectly right there. Then you take your scissors and you're gonna clip it like so. You're not gonna cut through past that purple line that I've drawn, but you're gonna create an opening. And that opening, like so, is going to allow you to tuck in the bottom of that back long piece in to give it a nicer finish. So you're going to manipulate it a little bit, tuck it in, work with it, and in the end you should have the seam allowance within the inside of that material. Go ahead and clip it. Once it's clipped, this is what it should look like. You can go ahead, just check that everything is neatly tucked in, and then you can go ahead and just stitch all the way across to close that opening. So my dress is finished and this is what the back looks like. I had a little bit of a hard time just getting everything to stay in place but that's what it looks like. I could have done a little bit better on this you can see but in the end my girls loved it. I had my daughters try it on just because my girls are so thin and you can tell that it's huge. So I had to go ahead and just make a few more alterations to mine just because my girls are so thin and I had to make that back area a little tighter. But overall, a perfect project for me.